Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions today together for Saturday, November 26th. Glad you're here with us on uh, this, this Saturday morning. Spend a little time in God's Word together here as we finish out the Thanksgiving holiday weekend and head into the first Sunday in Advent tomorrow. Bonnie just was telling me that that's not the right hymn. Um, she said the music wasn't right, and I think I think she's correct. I'm not sure what the tune was I was playing. It's it's in my files of music as the Tree of Life, but then I looked and the Tree of Life in uh, LSB, uh, words written by Stephen Starkey and music by Bruce Becker with a uh, Henry Gerke uh, setting, um, is under tight copyright still. Um, so I'm guessing that I mislabeled something. Um, and with the copyrights, I wouldn't be able to have it play. So I, I must have mislabeled it in my uh, collection here on the computer. So I'll have to, uh, I'll have to find it if I can somewhere at a, a resource where I can uh, make use of it. Um, otherwise, uh, I'll just have to take it off the list and use a different one. She's right. It wasn't. It wasn't the right tune. So I apologize for that. I'm not sure what we played. Um, in my file, in addition to that, it says it says "Wake, awake," but I don't think that's. It, I don't think it was that either. I don't know, Renee. If you were listening, maybe you can. Ch oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, it was "Wake, awake." Uh, night is flying. Okay. Thank you for that, Renee. I appreciate that. Um, either way, we had some organ music to get started here this morning. So. Um, certainly a hymn. <clears throat> Saturday, I just kind of, I'm just feeling a little better. Nose isn't running quite as badly as it was yesterday, and things are improving here. But Zan has a infection in his pinky. We're not sure how he got it, but I think he's, when he arises today uh, from uh, his bed, which, you know, teenagers, um, I think we'll be taking him to the urgent care to have them look at it. I'm not, we've been soaking it uh, in hydrogen peroxide every day, a couple times a day, and putting antibiotic on it. But I think uh, they'll probably just have to cut it off at the knuckle, and that'll be <laughs> that'll be that. But shouldn't joke about that. That's not really funny. No. Um, but also, uh, yeah, I thought of something last night. Is another thing to soak stuff in like that is Epsom salts, and I I neglected to to think of that, and, but whatever. We'll take him in and he'll probably lance it. That's always fun. Uh, all right, well, um, yeah, enough of that pitter-patter, chitter-chatter. Uh, Ashley, good morning. Glad you're here with us this morning, dear. Uh, Michael and Karen, good morning. Golf water temperature 70 degrees. Well, go fishing for me, will you? Go, go get your out-of-state license and rent a pole and, and go catch me something. I'm sure you've got time on your hands to do that. Um, actually, it's going to, Bonnie just said it's going to be up in the 50s today here. I'm really tempted to just go and not catch fish again. I, my boat's sealed up. I'm, the, the boat's not coming out. Um, but I could, there's a couple places I could go and just throw a line in the water from the shore and see what happens. Take a couple casts. Oh, Renee, good morning to you again. Um, yeah, sunny and windy in Michigan. All right. Kathy, good morning down there in windy Chicago, but sunny down there as well. Ken, good morning. Again, say hi to Patty for me. Jeannie, good morning. And uh, uh, Verna, good morning. Hey, you know what? I didn't see. Today I see, G I see Verna, but not Jerry. Well, maybe Jerry's further down. We'll keep going here. Uh, Deb and Ann and Grant, good morning. Glad to see you guys. Oh, I jumped. Glad to see you guys here this morning. Jill and John, good morning. Yeah, there's Bonnie chiming in. Uh, almost 50, yeah. Uh, Sharon, good morning to you. Steve's nearby. Say hi to him for me. Geraldine and... Well, I see Geraldine. I'm guessing Neil's nearby, too. Good morning to both of you. And... Uh, yeah, yeah, good thing you didn't hear that. Well, you know, I'm 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 a very compassionate father, and I would I would never say something that to like that to my child. Of course, that's the way my father talked to my brother and I. So I'm lying. <laughs> <clears throat> when Jean Luc was a little boy, oh, we live in a mobile home, and I was building a deck on it, and uh, he was I don't know. 
year, year and a half old maybe, two years. But he was toddling around in the yard as I was working, and he had some six-inch deck screws held in his hand. And the neighbor came by and said, you can't let him run around with those. And I said, why not? Well, she said, he might fall on him. And I said, well, only once. It was the hornets that got him, not the deck screws. And I couldn't do much about them. I told him to stay away from the, the uh, garbage can that had yellow jackets flying around it. Well, anyway, all right, let's uh, let's get on with this here. Enough priddle prattle. Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, The Morning Order. You know, I was talking with a brother pastor the other day, and in, in, in the worship service on Sunday morning, I, ne I never say, let us begin in the name of the, because that's not right. That's not the liturgy. The liturgy is simply... We begin. We do it, right? We don't. There's nothing to say there. Um, and I often say, "Let us begin here," because, or we begin here, because I, I prattled on and and we're um, so understand that that's not that's not part of the thing. The, the "Let us begin" is not part of the thing. The the thing begins with with the invocation of God's name. So Lutheran Service Book, page two ninety five, daily prayer, morning order. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the... Oh, pfft. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 75 in its entirety. It's a long psalm. Well, it's 10 verses, which, you know, relative to some of the stuff we've had recently is fairly long. So Psalm 75. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. We recount your wondrous deeds. At the set time that I appoint, I will judge with equity. When the earth totters and all its inhabitants, it is I who keeps steady its pillars. I say to the boastful, do not boast. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horn. Do not lift up your horn on high or speak with haughty neck. For not from the east or the west and not from the wilderness comes lifting up. But it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup with foaming wine well mixed, and he pours out from it. And all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the dregs. But I will declare it forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will cut off. But the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Um, give me just a moment here. Um, the, the psalm begins... Um, with the first verse, which is the declaration of the psalmist, um, the people crying to God, we give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your, for your name is near. We recount your wondrous deeds. And then God speaks back to the people in this psalm. And he says, at the time that I appoint, I will judge with equity. Um, as, as the church year wound down last week, and as we begin the season of Advent tomorrow, we're still looking at that, that second coming of Christ in, in judgment. Um, uh, and, and the disciples have asked, when? And, and the Lord has said, who knows? God knows. And according to his human nature, the Son does not know. But the Son, the son knows according to his divine nature, because his divine nature is part of the counsel of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But according to his human nature, as he's, as he's walking amongst the world, he does not know. He knows now. For now, after the ascension into heaven, 
as we await that return, he is fully human and fully divine. And the divine knows what the human knows, and the human knows what the divine knows. Uh, there is no humiliation. It's only exaltation. Um, but that date is not known. And I often tell people, and I was discussing this with somebody yesterday, don't be so worried about the end times, the last day, the great day, the coming of the Lord. Um, the scriptures inform us about that day so that those who are present at that time are not frightened. But yet, um, well, as the scripture says, lift up your head for you know your redemption draws near. Uh, be worried about your last day, the day upon which you breathe your last. Um, if that by some blessing the Lord returns and that happens to be the day that you're there, okay. But it is most likely that you and I will breathe our last before that great day comes and our day of judgment will occur upon the day of our death. So, what do you do? Well, you recount the wondrous deeds of the Lord. You remember all the things that he has done. Um, so God sets the, the point, judging with equity, right? Not equity of equality of outcome that we have in our society today. It's one thing that troubles me about the word equity in the scriptures now is we've got this equal, equivalence of outcome rather than equivalence of opportunity. But God judges every man equally, period. End of, end of discussion. And when I say man, I mean mankind, all persons. The earth will totter, its inhabitants... Uh, with all its inhabitants, and it is God who keeps steady its pillars. The, the world would fall apart without God. Right? This is a, a point into God's continuous care for his creation that he created and still remains with us. To the boastful, do not boast. Uh, to the wicked, do not lift up your horn. Don't lift up your horn on high. Don't have a haughty neck. Don't speak down your nose to other people. You are no better than them. And they are no better than you. For not from the east and the west, not from the wilderness comes lifting up. Salvation doesn't come from the east or the west. Salvation doesn't come from the wilderness. Although John will come out of the wilderness declaring it, right? That's where we be that's where where the 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 beginning of Jesus' ministry will come is is John uh, in his thirtieth year comes out of the wilderness wearing the the camel hair coat and the leather belt eating locusts and honey, decrying or crying with a voice, uh, make straight the path of the Lord. Um, but, but it is God, the psalmist says, who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. In the hand of the Lord is a, there is a cup of foaming wine, well mixed. That's the cup of wrath, right? Foaming is not a good thing. You know, think about it. When you, when you fill a glass with water at the tap and the water's foaming, are you a little concerned? Right? If you, um, if you wash a glass and you go to rinse it and you, you fill it with water to rinse it and it still foams, you think there's still detergent in there. And so you rinse it again, right? Foaming is a bad thing, um, this foaming, this cup of foaming wine is the cup of wrath that he pours out. But for you and I, Christ drank that cup. For those who are in Christ, he drank the cup for us. Actually, he drank the cup for all of mankind. But from him comes then the cup of grace. Uh, the cup in which we participate. Is not this cup a participation in the blood of Christ? Is not this bread that we eat a participation in the body of Christ? So Paul writes. Then, then comes back to the psalmist, right? So we had we had the psalmist speaking for uh, the faithful, and then we had God speaking to the faithful and to the world, and then we respond again uh, with the psalmist speaking to God and to the world. I will declare it forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will cut off. The horns of the righteous shall be lifted up. That's our psalm today, Psalm 75. Let's take a look. Now we're going to go to our reading here, Daniel chapter 6. Remember, yesterday we read chapter 5, and I mentioned that the uh, suggested reading was to go on to 7. Uh, but now we drop back to 6. 
And you've been waiting for this. I know you have. Every Sunday schooler waits. Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 through 28. So, Dan 6, 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps, to be throughout the whole kingdom, and over them three presidents, of whom Daniel was one, to whom these satraps would give an account, so that the king might suffer no loss. Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other presidents and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Then the presidents and the satraps sought to find a ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could find no ground for complaint or any fault. Because he was faithful, and no error or fault was found in him. Then these men said, We shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel, unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. Coffee is a little bitter this morning. Then these presidents and satraps came by agreement to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction that whoever makes petition to any god or man for thirty days, except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and injunction. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petitions and plea before his God. Then they came near and said before the king, concerning the injunction, O king, did you not sign an injunction that anyone who makes petition to any god or man within thirty days, except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, the thing stands fast, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes this petition three times a day. Then the king when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. And he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, No, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and the Persians that no injunction or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. Then the king commanded, <coughs> and Daniel, <coughs> Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, deliver you. And a stone. <coughs> oh, wow, this is not good. <coughs> and a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace, and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him, and sleep fled from him. 
Then at break of day, the king arose and went with haste to the den of lions. As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out with a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, as your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions. And then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths, and they have not harmed me, because I was found blameless before him. And also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in his God. And the king commanded, and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and cast into the den of lions, they, their children, and their wives. And before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion, people are to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> what? No, I'm dying here. Um... Isn't that great? I mean, we love to, we love to, it's, you know, like, like David and Goliath and Daniel in the lion's den, these are Sunday school narratives that um, we just love to share with our children. There's so many lessons that can be taught from Daniel, but they all come down to faithfulness. They all come down to, to faithfulness to God. Um, it's not simply that Daniel made a confession of trust in his God, but it's that he lived his life faithful to God, even though he had been torn as a young man from Jerusalem, uprooted and brought to Babylon. Even though he was a, a man out of place, a sojourner in a strange land, he lived his life faithfully to God. He didn't put Christian symbols around him or on the things that he had, though probably in his home he did. Um, but everything he did, Everything he did in his work and his life was a confession of who his God was. I, I very much doubt that he was perfect. Because no one is. Um, but he was faithful. Keep in mind that the opposite of sin is not good. The opposite of sin is faithfulness. The response to sin is faithfulness to God, faithfulness to Christ. So we began with King Nebuchadnezzar. We had King Belshazzar yesterday, uh, and, and today King Darius and, and King, Cy King, King Cyrus, uh, the Persian, eventually. Daniel served under all of these kings. Seventy years, Daniel lives in Babylon. Always faithful to God, um, and it would be it would be nice to say it would, it, we we would like to say to our children when we're te teaching these stories, see God rewards Daniel's faithfulness, um, but reward is probably not the right word. Daniel knew from the beginning that God was faithful to his people. 
And so Daniel was faithful in response to God's faithfulness. Remember when the king, uh, when King Nebuchadnezzar had the dream, um, the, 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 the prayer to God to show him the dream by, by uh, Daniel and, and the, the other three men um, didn't come after being shown the dream, but rather before. It wasn't, it wasn't, oh God, you've shown us the dream, thanks be to you. It was, God, you care for us in every other way, please show us this dream as well. And if it be your will, then we will know. And if it's not your will, then we will be put to death by the king's guard. And here in today's text, because of Daniel's success, um, which is not so much a result of his faithfulness, but one who is faithful in this way will have successes. Um, his life is a witness to, to God. And because of that, those around him see that he is different and become resentful for it. Remember, our Lord says that you will be hated for my name's sake. That's not something that starts with Jesus. That starts with the, the people who are faithful to God. It started with the Hebrews. People were afraid of Abraham and his people because they feared God and God cared for them. The satraps and presidents who aren't who are, who are nominated or named under Darius, who uh, they're probably not particularly good people. I mean, some of them probably are, but they're not faithful to God. And, and, and Daniel rises above them because his life is lived in faith towards God. And he stands out because his faith in God not only is shown in his, if you will, spiritual life, his, his practices of his life in Christ, or his life in God, when well, he's waiting for Christ, all in the Old Testament are, but not just in his spiritual life, his church life, but his whole life is lived in the fear of the Lord. And so the things that he does for King Darius in ruling the kingdom, and for Nebuchadnezzar, and for Belshazzar, and for the king of Persia, Cyrus, who I think is also Xerxes. Um, they're all done in the fear of the Lord, and so they're done faithfully. Right? It's Luther who teaches us that our vocation is, it, it, the best expression of our Christian life when, when we're outside of the church life is a life lived in the fear of God and in the expression of faithfulness, to do work for others as if we were doing it for God, because we are. So he's faithful to King Darius. And, and it's obvious in this text that Darius loves him because of his faithfulness, because of who he is, because he is a good person. We're not saved by being good people, by the way. We're saved by faith in Christ. But that faith in Christ leads us to live lives that are faithful to Christ, both in our church life on Sunday morning or Wednesday night or whenever, but also in our daily lives. To do a, a good day's work for a fair wage. To pay fair wages to our workers. Um, to care for one another. The presidents and satraps seek to use the law of God against Daniel. I mean, they said they could find nothing against him, nothing to testify to the king against Daniel, unless they find it in connection with the law of God. And so they created a law to oppress Daniel's religious practice. Kind of sounds like... It's not safe to go to church. Friends, we live in a, a day and age where, at least at this point in our nation, in the United States, we don't face 
religious persecution to the point of death. That's even spoken by Paul, I believe. You, you have not, you have not been faithful to the point of shedding blood. I think that's what Paul said. But there are those around us who would ask us, command us, order us to do things that are contrary to our faith. Just as the satraps and presidents got Darius to invoke this law that no one could petition a god or man other than the king for 30 days. In the face of that, like Daniel, we remain faithful. Daniel didn't hide it. He went to the highest room in his house where the windows were open and each day prayed three times while facing Jerusalem for all to see. He didn't hide it. He lived it. But he continued to do his work for the king as well. That's why Darius is so saddened when he has to throw him into the pit. The law says this I must do. Hmm? Daniel said, the law of my God says this I must do. And he did it. And God preserved him. God doesn't preserve the earthly life every, of everyone who is faithful to him the way he did with Daniel. He had purposes for doing what he did with Daniel. But in the first century, after Christ's death and resurrection and ascension, Christians gave their lives martyrs so that they could remain faithful and die with a confession of Christ on their lips. How many, how many Christians and others were thrown into uh, the Colosseum to be consumed by lions? He didn't necessarily, he doesn't necessarily, God doesn't necessarily preserve the earthly human life of every believer just because they're faithful. But what he does do, and what he has done, is given the life of his only son, so that even though we die in this world, yet shall we live. What he preserves is your eternal life by faith in Christ. Even forgiving the sins that you have, that when you don't live a life that's perfect and pure, because you can't. But by the blood of Christ shed upon the cross, he has forgiven that. This is his great, great and wondrous works for you. To save you from sin, death, the power of the devil, and give you eternal life in him. And it was Christ himself who said, He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Daniel was saved from the lions. You and I, through Christ Jesus, are saved from sin, death, and hell. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. I'm tempted to read this article that's in here from Luther, but I'm, we're just going to go to the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Alpha and Omega, bright morning star, you are the tree of life standing on each side of the river of the water of life, bringing healing to the nations. Prepare us for your coming through the healing medicine of your word and sacrament, putting to flight the diseases of our souls, that with willing hearts we may ever love and serve you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our prayer for ourselves and others on this Saturday morning. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Righteousness, shine into my heart and life this day. Help me to reflect your light so that those who do not yet know you as Lord and Savior might be directed to you. Thank you for bearing my guilt and the guilt of my sins. Let the sin and evil that may threaten today have no power over me. Grant me the grace to recognize your will and the faith to do it. In all my dealings with others today, let me be guided by this precept. Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. Keep me connected to you as a branch of the true vine, that I may draw the strength to abound in good works from you. May you be glorified today in all that I do. In your name I pray. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who suffer, whether it be in body, mind, or soul. Remind them always of the grace that comes from your Son who drank that wrath-filled cup for us and now extends to us the very body and blood that he shed upon the cross for us in the cup of grace and the bread of, and the bread of plenty. And be especially this day with Peter, Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Pam, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them assurance and comfort. And if their day and time draws near, remind them that you stand before them, and in you they are forgiven. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our daily devotion to a close on this Saturday, November 26th. On, on Monday, we'll be headed uh, into uh, a new section of readings. We'll be leaving uh, Daniel behind. Um, in fact, in my in my treasury here, let me see if I can get the ah get the camera to to not glare too badly. I yeah I can't. Um, yeah, better angle. There we go. Time of Christmas. We'll be headed into the time of Christmas, which begins with Advent. No, Christmas doesn't start till December twenty fifth. But the time from from. Uh, the beginning of Advent, the Sunday closest to St. Andrew's Day, uh, through noon on December 24th is the time of Advent, um, the season of Advent, uh, during the time of Christmas. And, that, and then Christmas itself is from uh, d noon on December 24th through the 12th day of Christmas, Epiphany, right? The season of Epiphany. And then, then we go into the time of Lent. So, um, God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here on Monday morning. Go to church tomorrow, first Sunday in Advent. Um, go hear the, the readings of uh, Christ coming in his uh, final judgment uh, as we prepare for him to come in the manger. God's peace be with you, and we'll see you uh, Monday morning. Uh, and again, this is not the tree of life. It's wake, awake, for night is flying.